welcome to this generation. Bethany Stanley is usually your host, but she's playing basketball in the two-way uh, state championship here at Service High School in Anchorage, Alaska. It's going to be a good one. In most rural villages across the state of Alaska, you won't find shopping malls or movie theaters, but you will find other things. For example, in the village of Russian Mission, located on the Yukon River, you'll find plenty of four-wheelers. Lots of dogs. A selection of churches. And basketball. It's the village sport here in Russian Mission, as well as most other rural communities across our vast state. Here in Sitka, Alaska, two southeast communities have gathered to battle it out on the court. Basketball is important to the youth of rural Alaska since there is often very little to do during the long winter months. It's hours of playing this vigorous sport that make the youth of rural Alaska some of the best players in the state. In fact, at the annual state basketball tournaments, you'll see a lot of native faces, mostly because they're the best. For most of these youth, it's about the glory of winning the state title. But for this group of young ladies from Matanuska Christian High School, it's about the glory of God. Lord, we acknowledge it's your hand that's blessed this season. Lord, you've blessed this girls team. Lord, you helped us to get this far. We give all the glory to you and the honor to you. I just thank you for the opportunity and, the, and just the um, doors that you've opened for us to, to be here and the unity that you brought up among our um, team. And I just thank you for that. In Jesus' name. I pray that you just bless this worship. I pray that you bless the game that we're going to be playing, Lord. I ask that you bless the, the girls on the other team, Lord, that you also give them strength. Right now, help us to focus on you, Lord Jesus. Bring all of our thoughts unto you and, and towards you, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that, that every coaching tip and everything that, that they've been taught this year would just, um, they would know that they have it in them to do exceedingly well and excellent, Lord Jesus. And I just pray, God, that the Holy Spirit would, would um, prompt their memories to all those things that they need to do, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Since this group hasn't been to state for the most part, I think two of the girls were on the team a few years ago. And done. Anyway, um, worshiping the Lord helped a lot. <laughs> that was awesome. And just uh, the presence of God, and I think we got energized. So we're, um, we're just looking forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun.
just, I really um, thank God for this team that this is the first year that I've actually had fun at basketball. And um, I just really thank this team for keeping their heads up and, you know, keep encouraging me to be the all I can be. And um, I just thank God for leading me to this school and to um, participate because in the beginning I wasn't going to play, but it, it was prophesied for me to play. So here I am, and I'm doing God's will, and hopefully I know God's going to bless us even more. So We have to be mindful of fast break. It's moments before the game, and a quick pep talk from the coach will help prepare these girls for the big game ahead. But the most important step for preparing for the state competition comes from within the girls themselves. Dear Lord, I just pray that you just bless us right now, Lord. I just pray that you just give us strength and courage to go out there, Lord. I just pray that if there's any nervousness, I ask you to just take it away right now, that we're just going to go out there and just play our game and have fun. I pray you protect us and uh, keep all of our injuries uh, safe. Lord, I pray you just heal us, Lord, and that you would uh, mentally equip us for this game, God, that we would be tough, Lord, and that we would be sportsmanlike, God, nice to the refs, nice to the other team, and that we would encourage each other all the time, Lord, God, and that we would just glorify you in all that we do. A little warm up and these girls are ready to play. Their opponents from Point Hope are a tough team from the far north who've been preparing for this moment all season long. For Point Hope, it was a strong start, stealing the ball every opportunity. With a strong defense and a charging offense, the Point Hope girls team would be hard to beat. You gotta get back on defense. Everyone must hustle back. All right? Knock me my eyes. That contact would have gone off. By halftime, the Point Hope team had a commanding lead and the Matanuska Christian team would need a new plan of attack if they were going to stay in this game. Uh, they, they're doing well on defense. They just need to open up the shooting. Jubilee start hitting her threes. We'll get back in it. Well, we got to stop their three-point shots and their uh, fast break. So we're probably going to start out with a man-to-man -man that'll cut down on the threes and hopefully we can stay with them on the fast breaks. We got to slow down on our shots. We're throwing up some wild shots. Just got to be calm, make our baskets, and we can get back in the game. And that's exactly what they did. Through the third and fourth period, both teams battled it out back and forth with a strong offense and tight defense on both sides.
In the fourth period, the Matanuska team managed to bring the game within 10 points. Everyone, get your mask. Don't let anybody be open. Stay with me. No one wants to go tomorrow morning at 9.40. That's right. Come on, we're doing good. All right. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! But the Point Hope defense was just too tough and the game would go to the Point Hope girls. It was a great game on both teams' parts and a good warm-up for tomorrow's game. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Nooksack. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. The moment you enter the doorway at the Millennium Hotel, another world surrounds you. It's a world of friendly faces and cordial service. It's a place of great taste and great tastes. The Millennium Hotel is a haven of relaxation and personal restoration, of attentive service and attention to details. But at the end of the day, we won't read you a bedtime story. Although, would you be surprised if we did? It's about not doing drugs. It's about knowing where you come from. What you do. And who you are. It's about not doing drugs. It's the 2003 Alaska State Basketball Tournament being held in Anchorage this year. And for many of the teams that are here to compete in this event, it's the sports highlight of the year. Most of the teams here have traveled hundreds of miles to be part of this competition. A competition that has drawn spectators from all over. For the Unalakleet boys team, it meant catching a flight into the big city of Anchorage. But for their competitors, the Nanana boys team, it was a lengthy drive to the state's largest city. But traveling is not an unfamiliar term to the students from Nanana. In fact, much of the Nanana team is comprised of students from all over the state of Alaska who have come to this historic town to live in the Nanana Student Living Center while attending Nanana High School. They're from all over the state. We've got some from Mountain Village, some out of Fairbanks, Anchorage, um, I think where Derek's from. A lot of them out of Mountain Village, a lot of the western part of the state. Today, Nana's moving into um, uh, uh, developing um, a relationship with, with the rural communities and bringing their children here to attend high school. We have a st student living center here that has a capacity of almost 100 students, and it's uh, about 50% full right now. And once we get some additions built onto the school to handle uh, more kids in the, in, in the, within the school itself, we'll, um, we'll be bringing in, you know, having opportunities for other young, young uh, students from around the state to come and, and go to school here. It's an opportunity for rural students to attend a high school that offers a higher education than they could receive in their village school. We're trying to concentrate on a lot of the boat get experience. They've got aviation classes, uh, refrigeration classes, and I think, and then just an overall better education. You know, we try to prepare them for college, which a lot of the times the kids don't have that opportunity from where they're at. The Nanana Student Living Center provides a home for these visiting students, some of who prefer the smaller class sizes and others who prefer being closer to their village than they might be if they attended other boarding schools, such as Mount Edgecombe High School. The Living Center is not so much 
is not so much a place to live and learn as it is just a new environment and more of an experience. You don't, you don't live there. You experience it. You, you, it. It comes in in every one of your senses. You touch your very, you've touched whatever it is you're doing or you're working on. You, you sense all these different new, I don't know, new stimuli. And the most beautiful thing about it is that people actually care. It's like breathing a breath of fresh air at a coming out of, after coming out of Los Angeles. <laughs> it's invigorating and it, it stimulates your mind, your body, and your soul. You, you never know what to expect. Here, the Living Center truly fosters and actively supports education for all students, regardless of ability, age, what, what have you, you know? It's, it's, it's something that I would actively support and recommend for anyone looking for an alternative environment for education and learning. And don't forget Patrick's other reason for attending school here. Our basketball team is the best in the region. There must be some truth to that because here they are at the state tournament going head to head with the boys team from Unalakleet, Alaska. For the Nanana team, it would be a game of catch up as the Unalakleet team took a demanding lead from the start. <laughs> Giving it their all, the Nanana team pulled within eight points of Unalakleet, but not close enough for victory. In the end, Unalakleet would win this game with a final score of 66 to 54. The first half I was disappointed, but then they came out in the fourth quarter and they really played with a lot of heart, you know, and that's all I ask of them. Even if we're down by 20 or ahead by 20, they keep playing hard. Don't go away. This generation will be right back. And all you good basketball players come to Nanana and stay in the boarding home. Kenai Peninsula College, part of UAA, and Alaska Christian College, working together for the future. For the first time, I really looked at my life like I held a mirror up to it, and I got to see who I really was. An opportunity to challenge yourself. Made me feel like I was at home. Small classes designed for your success. It's challenging, but it's not overwhelming. A quality education in a rural environment. We are definitely a family, <laughs> and everything that comes with it. Turn it up! about you said you would play basketball with her she said she'll never speak to you again <laughs> parents that are involved with their kids are more likely to help keep their kids away from drugs <laughs> each week heartbeat alaska brings you great stories from all over the state and we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Northland. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. Hey, It's 
the second day of the state championships and the Matanuska Christian girls team is ready to play ball, this time against the Angoons girls team. Yesterday, both of these teams lost their first game and today, both teams have plans to win this one. Play with more energy in the first half especially. We played a good second half, but we were slow in the first, so we're gonna come out pressing and try and energize the girls. And uh, I know we can win if we play a good game. And although it's important to these girls that they come to Anchorage and do their very best on the court, it's just as important to them in other ways. This is really important socially. They get to see uh, the big city of Anchorage. They get to meet kids from all over Alaska, see different cultures, and it's really important to the kids to, this is a great experience, just not know basketball, but to get to meet other people and different things like that. From the word go, it was a close game with both teams shining on the court. From period to period, the two teams stayed neck and neck, playing their hearts out. It was a good game until the fourth period, then it was a great game. Tied 50 to 50 with seconds left in the game, Matanuska's Bethany Stanley went up for a shot and was fouled. <laughs> Sending her to the free throw line with two shots and no time left on the clock. That was stressful. <laughs> It was stressful because, I don't know, my team was counting on me. Imagine the pressure and anxiety that must have been running through her mind. Although she missed the first free throw, she had one more shot left to finish the game. Pressure. I had the same thing when I was in high school. I had two free throws with no time. I missed them both. For Angoon, it was a second chance for victory. But Matanuska Christian had plans of their own. And for Bethany Stanley, it was an opportunity to redeem herself. In the end, Matanuska Christian School would take the lead and hold it for victory. That was a tough game. Tough game. Uh, we were just really thankful to be able to get a victory. Uh, helped a lot there when their two good players fouled out at the end. But it was just hard fought game all the way. What did you think about your girls? Well, I was very proud of them. They worked really hard. The Lord helped them, that's for sure, in some of those shots. And, uh, you know, we just give thanks to God for that win. That's for sure. Angoon, they're a really good team. Really nice girls. Right, it was fun to play against them. They had a lot of hustle and a good attitude. Um, they're a really good team, actually. They're a really good team. I watched them play yesterday, and um, we ha kind of figured that we were going to play them today, but they're a really good team. They um, kept their heads up, and they had positive attitudes, and um, I like playing with them. I like playing with them. At the end of the state tournaments, the two-way boys title would go to the Heidelberg team, and the two-way girls champions would be Nanilchik. In the 1A division, the boys team from Norvik would be crowned champions and the girls team from Mountain Village would take home the title. Just proving once again that when it comes to basketball, the native people of Alaska are the reigning champs. her two free throws to bring, put us into overtime, but she redeemed herself in overtime, and Matanuska came out ahead. There's a lot more basketball um, in the next couple of days, and for this generation, we'll see you next time. To purchase a VHS copy of this program, have your credit card number ready and call area code 907-563-7440 or mail $20 check or money order to Jeannie Green Productions, 6216 Old Seward Highway, Anchorage, Alaska 99518. Ask for the program number listed below.